The start of 2024 marks the 13th anniversary of Sandy Bridge second generation Intel CPUs. Back then, high-end gamers and productivity users would have opted for the i7-2600 for its better compute performance and its better gaming performance. In 2011, this CPU would have set you back by $297. However, it can be found for just £16 on the used market. But does this mean it's a good option for budget gaming PCs? Well, stick around to find out because I've benchmarked one. Save some money on your next PC build with today's sponsor, GVG Mall. I've personally used GVG Mall to activate some of my PC builds and they're sorting you out with 25% off if you use code YAM. GVG Mall offers both Windows 10 and 11 OEM keys and if you want to save a bit of money, you could buy the Windows 10 Pro key and upgrade to Windows 11 free of charge. This is if you've got Windows 10 installed. Just copy and paste the code you receive into the Windows activation box and there you have it. An activated copy of Windows. Now you can enjoy your PC without any interruptions and you can also personalize it as well. So don't forget to use code YAM for 25% off of your Windows OEM key with the link in the description. Unlike its K-SKU brother, the 2600 non-K has a locked multiplier. This will probably hurt its gaming performance in 2023 and 2024, as its single thread performance is kind of, let's say, not particularly ideal in modern games. However, the base specs of both these CPUs remain the same, with four cores, eight threads, eight megabytes of L3 cache, and they even have the same TDP of 95 watts even though I haven't seen the 2600 that I've used today go above 65. And I think hyperthreading is what's going to potentially save this CPU's gaming performance in 2023. This is because a lot of games these days are optimized for eight threads and that's what this CPU has. Back in 2011, Sandy Bridge was actually kind of revolutionary. This is because they were the first lineup of CPUs from Intel to support AVX instruction sets. So this ensures that most modern applications and games will run on them. But one thing to note, Sandy Bridge CPUs do lack the newer AVX2 instruction sets, which were new with Haswell CPUs. And this means that some games and some applications may potentially not run correctly or even run at all on older second gen CPUs. If you wanted to build a budget gaming PC with a Sandy Bridge i7 like this, what sort of performance should you expect? To find out how well this ancient i7 gets on in games in 2023 and 2024, I've tested it using my Vega 56 at 1080p, which I think is a reasonably high-end GPU for this processor. For comparison purposes, I've tested the i7's results to my modern-ish i5 12400F, and all games have been loaded on a crucial BX500 1TB SATA SSD. So let's see how this i7 got on. The first game on test today is Fortnite, setting it to the performance API here and then leaving all of the settings on low and the i7-2600 fared. It was a mediocre gaming experience, let's say that. That is because the average is just 125 frames per second on the performance API, which isn't particularly brilliant. And the 1% low is even worse, getting just 28 frames per second. So it was a bit of a stutter fest here on the i7. Performance on the i5 was much better, getting a performance uplift of 99% with the average frame rate, going up to 249 frames per second. But the 1% low was still not very great at just 89 frames per second. So Fortnite Chapter 5 has got a bit of work to do with the optimization. Cyberpunk is up next and this turned out a very surprising result. That is because just between the average frame rates of both these CPUs tested today, there is a 2% difference. This is because the i7-2600 got 56 frames per second and the i5-12400F got 57 FPS for its average. This is great performance on both of these CPUs, even though the 1% load didn't fare as well with the i7, getting just 35 frames per second whereas the i5 got 43 FPS. So if you wanted to play Cyberpunk with a Vega 56 and an i7-2600, it's definitely playable. The next game up is Rainbow Six Siege, and this is the sort of game that someone with an older system like this might be playing. And to be fair, the i7-2600 fared pretty well, getting 156 FPS on average with a 1% low of 92 FPS. 
This is great for a 144Hz experience at 1080p, but on average, you are losing 83% performance to a modern system. As the i5 12400F got 285 FPS on average, and the 1% load jumped up massively to 198. So in games like this, the 1% lows do matter, and this is something that you should take into consideration. Counter-Strike 2 saw the biggest performance delta between both these CPUs today as the old i7 got just 77 FPS on average and it was only good for 48 FPS for the 1% low. So is this playable? No, not really. You want at least 140 FPS in a game like this as it is very competitive. However, the i5 12400F increased this by 158% with the average frame rate, going up to 199 FPS and to be fair, the 1% load didn't fare too great either, getting just 88 frames per second. However, it did feel way smoother on the i5 system, so this is something that you should definitely look out for if you want to play Counter-Strike 2. The Witcher 3 is actually surprisingly CPU intensive in the Novigrad area, and to be fair, it did give the i7 a big run for its money. That is because the old i7 was good enough for just 47 frames per second, and the 1% low wasn't great either, getting 27 FPS. If you were to use a bit more of a modern system, you would be good for 105 FPS with a 1% low of 82 frames per second. And I think that's the biggest upgrade with a modern CPU is the 1% low is just way better in The Witcher 3. There's less dips and overall the frame rate's higher and it's a lot smoother as well. GTA 5 is actually surprisingly CPU intensive, especially for older processors like this, but the i7 was good enough for 66 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 47 frames per second. To be fair, I don't think this performance is too bad, especially if you've got a 1080p 60Hz monitor. However, you are losing about 120% performance when it comes to the average frame rate. That is because the i5 12400F got 145 frames per second, and the average frame rate was also looking very decent there with 118. So both of these CPUs are fine for GTA 5, even though the i5 does perform better. But at the end of the day, you don't really need high frame rates in a game like this. The benchmarking pass that I use in God of War is actually quite CPU demanding and yeah, it did give the i7 a bit of a run for its money. That is because it got 59 FPS on average and the 1% low was kind of lagging behind a bit with just 37 frames per second. The modern i5 ups its performance by 41% on average, getting 83 frames per second right there, and the 1% low was vastly improved, going up to 72 frames per second. And this is something that you need to note with newer processors, and I've said this quite a lot in this video, the 1% lows are substantially improved with a newer processor. <laughs> The built-in benchmark for Horizon Zero Dawn does give CPUs a bit of a run for their money, especially old ones like the i7 we're using today. This is because on average it scored just 72 frames per second, with a 1% low of 49 frames per second, and to be fair, this is very playable performance in my opinion, as in Horizon Zero Dawn, you don't really need a high frame rate in this game. But if you were to have a more modern CPU, like the 12400F, you are losing around 22% performance for the average frame rate, as that got 88 FPS, and the 1% load did also go up by quite a bit, getting 65 frames per second. So yet again, it's not the biggest deal if you're playing on an older CPU in Horizon Zero Dawn like this i7, but you are losing performance on a GPU like the Vega 56. After all that benchmarking and taking a look at the data, I think it's fair to say this about the 2600. I think this i7's time has come and gone because you're just losing bucket loads of performance to modern processors. On average, it's losing 84% gaming performance with that average frame rate when compared to the 12400F I tested it against today. And also the 1% lows were suffering quite a bit. And the 1% lows are very important because they affect the perceived smoothness of the gameplay. Surprisingly, the only game which sort of performed very well on the i7-2600 was Cyberpunk out of all games. But I suspect this is down to the low preset uses low crowd density and I think this is just not very CPU intensive at all. But if you were to raise this setting from low to maybe medium or high, 
it would cause massive drops in performance. Another game which performed decently at face value was Rainbow Six Siege. Here the i7 was good enough for 144Hz experience, however switching up to the 12400F and that was good enough for a 240Hz experience. That is losing a lot of performance with the same GPU. And this is a trend which continued with every other game tested today. Yes, the i7-2600 was playable in every single game tested today, but you're just losing bucket loads of performance to modern processors. Even a newer CPU like an i3-10100F or something like that will absolutely smash this i7 any day of the week. At this price point, I simply cannot recommend Sandy Bridge i7s in 2023, and that is because Haswell literally only costs like £4 more. The best value CPU on the Haswell platform right now is definitely the Xeon E3 1241B3. It's basically an i7 4770, but better even though it's cheaper. It's got the newer firmware interface material, which the i7 4770 does not. And it's also got a higher base clock over the i7 as well. The only downside to it is it might not be supported on some LGA 1150 motherboards and it doesn't have integrated graphics either, but being a gamer, I don't think you really care about that. Compared to the i7-2600, this Xeon will give a substantial performance uplift in both games and productivity, and it also has support for the newer AVX2 instruction set, so there's basically no compatibility problems with it whatsoever to a certain degree. As it's a Haswell-based CPU, it will use DDR3 memory, so there's no extra memory costs, and LGA 1150 motherboards don't really cost that much more than LGA 1155 boards, so that shouldn't be an issue either. So long story short, Haswell is a way better value than Sandy Bridge, especially in the modern day. Right then, that's that. Don't buy Sandy Bridge, buy Haswell instead, because it costs probably all in all about 10 or 15 pounds more and it's so much more worth it especially when you're considering the extra gaming performance and the extra compatibility which Haswell systems afford but if you were given a Sandy Bridge i7 or something like that in a system which was just passed down to you or you saw one on the side of the road or something like that I would definitely take up that offer because it is well let's be honest it's free performance and to be fair for free you can't really complain too much but if you were shopping for a really budget gaming PC, definitely go Haswell, don't go Sandy Bridge. So with that being said, I'm going to leave this video here. If you like this one, there are two other videos right here, which might be right up your alley. And if you got this far into the video, I would like to say thank you for sticking around this long and consider leaving the video a like if you really like the video. With that being said, I'll leave this one here and I'll catch you in the next one.